I will go ahead and call the um, board selecting meeting to order. This is Monday, June 8th at 6.32 p.m. Um, <coughs> this meeting is being recorded um, uh, both by the town and by um, Gail Hunty, Hunter for accuracy in the minutes. Uh, anybody else who's recording the meeting is uh, asked to notify the chair. Um, <coughs> uh, this is a meeting that we've inserted in addition to our regular meetings. Um, <coughs> And uh, I'm not planning on taking any comments on items that are not on the agenda tonight. Tonight's agenda has a review of the annual town meeting um, status, um, uh, updates on COVID-19, and then um, uh, discussion around the uh, fire chief finalist position. Um, so to start off, um, uh, we are going to move to agenda item number one, which is the annual town meeting review. Um, and Alan, if you could give us an update on where you stand, I would appreciate it. Well, I, I think we are in pretty good shape. Um, all of the materials are being assembled for distribution to all households uh, at the Scout House. Uh, when Tom and I finished our two-hour uh, duty session this morning, there were a little over 1,100 packets assembled, which is about half of what we need to go to the households. And then there'll be more uh, available at the meeting. But we want to we want to encourage people to bring the ones that they get at their house rather than having hand and transfers of packets at the meeting. Um, and, you know, Christina is doing a great job of organizing the logistics. Uh, we have a, a sound system provider in hand. She and I have tested the electronic voting equipment on the field. It's it's good uh, from end zone to end zone, and that's way more of the field than we expect to need to use. Um, so I think it's coming together pretty well. The great unknown, of course, is the weather. I, I have, I've also been working on a um, protocol to protect everyone's health at the meeting with um, tremendous assistance from Deb Bradley. Uh, I haven't published it yet because I am going to be meeting with the Board of Health virtually on Thursday evening um, and want to get their formal input uh, in addition to Deb's very helpful informal input. Um, and I'm hoping that they will uh, endorse what Deb and I have come up with, uh, I think it's pretty comprehensive. And I think that will reassure the voters that they can attend with a reasonable expectation of safety. A, a, a quick outline of that. We are spacing uh, individual chairs and pairs of chairs 10 feet apart on the football field. There will be aisles 10 feet wide between chairs for people to go to the microphones if they want to speak. Microphones will be covered with disposable plastic hoods, which will be rotated every time a speaker comes to the microphone. So uh, each each speaker will have a hood that's separate. I'm not sure what that interference is. Um, hand sanitizers will be available. We're trying very hard to face out the check-in process. I'm hoping that people will be willing to come early so that we don't have too many people congregating um, at the two check-in stations. And I'm also going to ask people to wait in their seats as we exit the football field. Are you done, Jeff? No. <laughs> I'm sorry, I got cut out. Okay, well, I, I don't know whether everybody can hear me over your rustling, but um, we're, we're gonna, I'm going to ask people to remain in their seats at the end of the meeting until I call their row, and then I'll send gr different groups of voters to the two uh, exits um, so that we don't have a lot of crowding and, and uh, interference with appropriate spacing as we exit. I know everybody will want to go home as quickly as possible. 
and we'll try to make it as efficient as possible. But it would be better to do it row by row rather than uh, everybody uh, thronging for the exit at the same time. Questions? Welcome questions. Uh, questions from board members? <coughs> Sounds like everything's been covered. Doing my best, but but uh, this is not my expertise. So if you have any thoughts, please send them on. Uh, Greg, do you have any uh, comments or updates? No, I think Alan covered it pretty well. Um, we certainly want to remind folks to bring the materials that they receive to the town meeting. We don't. Um, we don't really want to be handing things out at town meeting, so we really um, are strongly encouraging people to bring their packets with them, the FinCon report and the supplemental pages that are stapled together. Um, so it'll be important to uh, for people to remember to do that. I actually do have a question, Eli, if I might. Sure, are we going to have um, recycled bins available for people um, if they don't wish to take papers home with them? I, I believe we will. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to encourage people to, to drop their papers in those recycle bins. Okay. Along, also, the voting clickers, of course. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Alan. Okay, any other questions from uh, other members of the board? Uh, Eli Muffin is able, unable to mute, unmute herself. All right. How about now, Muffin? She's unmuted and she has been unmuted. Are you there? Okay, let's do a little roll call on board members. Arthur, are you there? I'm here. And obviously Becky and uh, Jeff are there. Uh, Muffin? Nope, she was there, and now she's not. Muffin? Nope. Uh, her screen says that the host has still got her muted. Well, I will mute her and then unmute her again. Muffin, how about now? Because I definitely have her as unmuted. This is a repeat problem from the last she's, time, I'm afraid. She's yep. going to call in. Yep. <sighs> is that you her dialing? Her di yeah, that's her dialing. <laughs> so she isn't muted. Stop meeting. I, I'm speaking and you can't hear me, so I'm muted somehow. We can hear you. Well, oh, you just, is that because you called in? No, I just hung it up. So can you hear me now? Yes, yes. I can. Yes. Fine. I'm not touching a thing. Okay. <laughs> are, are, you, are you on your computer? Eli, this is why I asked you in the beginning, were you going to mute or unmute? So don't touch anything on my computer. <laughs> I didn't after you were signed in. I didn't touch it. I swear. All right. Okay, I'm all set. Ain't technology grand? I mean, yeah. really? Not so much. No. Yeah. All right. Well, we're probably going to have another round or two of this. I am fairly certain it's bound to happen. All right. Any other any any other questions from uh, board members to? Um, uh, um, Alan or Greg for the town meeting. 
Okay. Uh, and we've not received a petition regarding a special town meeting, so we're going to skip over that item, and we're going to move to... Um, could, could I just... Uh, if, if, Eli, if that petition... I mean, today was the last day that petition could come in for it to be included on the same day as an annual town meeting, which, which we've done frequently. If that petition comes in later, it will mean holding a special town meeting on a later date. That's correct. Meeting. Yep, the applicant was notified of that. Um, uh, if the uh, petition does come in, the Board of Selectmen will have 45 days to, uh, well, we'll have to schedule a town meeting within 45 days, uh, and that's uh, the way it would be. I, I understand. All right, uh, I'm going to move on to item number two on the agenda, which is um, COVID-19 updates. Can we start with... Um, with, your, with your permission, Mr. Chairman, I'm going to sign off. Okay. All right, Alan. Um, uh, that's fine, and uh, nice to see you again, and we'll see you uh, pretty Thank soon. You. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, Brian. Thank you all. Bye, Alan. Bye-bye. Okay, so we have under uh, COVID-19 updates two two main items. We have a review of options for allowing outdoor <coughs> dining and displays, and a review of status of uh, <coughs> reopening parks and beaches. Um, I'm also going to start with a brief update from Todd Fitzgerald. Uh, Todd, could you give us an update on how things went this week so far? <laughs> Yeah, pretty much uh, status quo from last week. Uh, we, however, we continue to uh, receive calls over social distancing and uh, other related COVID issues, um, but we're handling those accordingly. Um, I know Cheryl has made a uh, significant preparation to get her staff ready and the uh, the, the bathhouse ready. Uh, moving forward, I think police staff will uh, continue to monitor the beach seven days a week as long as we have it uh, open to residents only. Um, not sure if Cheryl's on, but she maybe can uh, go over her plan. But uh, from a police standpoint, uh, we're pretty much ready to open the beach to normal activities to uh, residents only. Okay, we'll cover that in uh, uh, the second part, in the part B of the update here. There was a question uh, in the chat, uh, are our residents, are we going to uh, be allowing questions or comments at the end of the meeting? I'm going to allow <coughs> um, public comment on the uh, review of options for allowing outdoor dining in this place because that's a fairly new topic. I uh, probably won't be taking public comment on the review of status for reopening the beaches because we've been over that a few times in these meetings already. And um, I expect the dining, the public dining to take a little bit of time and we still have to get to um, uh, <coughs> reviewing and ratifying new fire chief who is on the call uh, tonight with us and waiting as well. So, um, with that, uh, I'd like to get into the first item, which is reviewing options for allowing outdoor dining and displays. I know we have a bunch of um, uh, businesses here as well, uh, and uh, ever, the meeting is right now in lecture mode, so the only people who can actually speak are the um, people that I have unmuted, and those are mostly the Board of Selectmen and some staff. And when we get to the part where I'm going to do uh, take public input on this item, uh, I'll put the meeting into question and answer mode and people can queue up. Um, all right, so uh, last week, uh, a couple of board members worked with uh, town staff to come up with a plan, along with the businesses, to come up with a plan um, related to supporting sidewalk dining in in town as quickly as we can. Um, uh, we got a draft plan, of the, uh, draft of that plan, and thoughts on uh, earlier today. And Jeff, uh, if you don't mind, could you run us through um, what you sent us? Sure. Uh, <clears throat> 
The, uh, the document that was sent out this afternoon, um, which is the reopening guidelines for extension of premises into outdoor dining, um, is a document that's been called from many sources um, and relies uh, mostly on, most heavily on the uh, state of Massachusetts documentation for uh, safety in outdoor dining and phase two restaurant reopening. Um, we uh, tried to create a simplified, streamlined, and uniform uh, application process for this. Um, for restaurants with liquor licenses, um, there's uh, a requirement that they must uh, apply for a um, amended uh, license for their premises uh, to address the issues of outdoor dining. Um, this is a streamlined process that the state's provided where um, the Board of Selectmen is the uh, local licensing authority can um, approve this without having to go through ABCC and the state of Massachusetts. Um, and it will be a temporary uh, license adjustment or amendment um, that will have an expiration date, I believe, of November 1st. Um, the other documentation that we've laid out in, uh, in what you were sent um, addresses um, what needs to go into the plan, um, what the guidelines for that are, both local and state, um, a basic information sheet um, that takes all of about five minutes to fill out, um, a, uh, an affidavit that uh, states that um, the restaurant has um, reviewed and implemented the Massachusetts Restaurant Safety Standards and Checklist um, for social distancing, hygiene protocols, staffing and operations, cleaning and disinfecting, um, and any other additional procedures that they've implemented. And that the uh, owner, manager of the business needs to sign off on that, that, uh, that they have done that, that they have reviewed those uh, guidelines and implemented them in their business. Um, there's a separate affidavit um, for um, the applicant to uh, generally accept that they are following the responsibilities of maintaining a clean and safe outdoor dining experience, et cetera. And, and then finally, there's uh, the guidelines that were drawn together um, in uh, terms of public safety issues and um, in a meeting of uh, the two selectmen in this group and Greg and Chief Cheryl. Um, and those are the local, the local uh, guidelines um, that highlight specific areas of the Massachusetts guidelines, but also tweak them a little bit. Um, so uh, I could put them up on my screen if you wanted me to do that, but. Um, Basically, that the guidelines are that uh, the business must adhere to the state protocols. We've already gone over that. Um, they must apply to the selectmen for an amendment to the premises license for al alcohol um, using an abbreviated ABCC application that is going to be available in this packet to any business, any of the businesses in town that wants to uh, continue to serve alcohol outdoors or to serve alcohol outdoors. Um, uh, request for a complete diagram of the proposed layout, spacing, 
width of pedestrian ways, um, proposed public property use, um, description of needed safety barriers, and um, we've limited each business to a maximum of two public parking spaces um, if they are going to move into public parking areas. And um, the town has researched the availability of Jersey barriers to put around those parking spaces to uh, make them safe for pedestrians and or um, seating. And um, so that the businesses will not be required to put those in, the town will be doing that. Yeah, can I ask a question? Yep. About because I because I had a note about um, how the spaces would be protected from the street. So if we were to put Jersey barriers outside and around two parking space spaces, how far are those going to go into the street and would into They'll the go. travel lane? And would the public safety um, vehicles equipment? struggle getting around corners and around Jersey barriers? Uh, we very carefully considered those issues uh, when we met with Todd and um, Greg. And uh, the conclusion was that the Jersey barriers would be um, aligned on the interior Got it. Of, the, of the parking spaces so that okay. there, there would be no more of an intrusion into the right of way. What? Than, uh, than already uh, exists from a parked car. Awesome, um, thank you. And uh, there was some concern about some areas of um, Union Street that may be too be narrow and uh, difficult for uh, particularly uh, fire safety to get through. Yeah. Um, and we are um, working on addressing those. Um, uh, in terms of the way that the barriers get laid out. But basically, we're not doing anything that's not already a parking space, um, and we're limiting it to two. I know Thank that you. there was uh, a lot of concern on the part of... Yeah. Um, yeah. Yep. I just wanted to point out that the two spaces are directly in front of these businesses. They're not, you know, they can't move them down the street. Right. Okay. Um, pedestrian travel ways have to be maintained uh, with a minimum of three feet and ADA compliance. Um, and uh, the um, Okay, let me let me keep going with that. Uh, the, finally, the serving of alcohol beverages outdoors, um, once the license is approved, must include the service of food at the same time. Um, so that uh, it's not going to be a setup where people can just sit on the sidewalk and drink. Um, that was a concern that was raised to us. Um, there was a there was a, a real concern expressed um, by other retailers, um, other businesses in town, um, and some of the public about um, the loss of parking. And I, Greg, if you if you want to talk about what we, or Todd, if you want to talk about what we've done in terms of parking, um, we're changing the number of hours that people can park. We're reopening. Uh, um, some part of the, some of the uh, non-resident parking in Masconomo um, yeah. that, that was closed did. off, um, yeah. et cetera. Go ahead, Becky. Um, these are these are things that we that that we as the working group propose to the board of selectmen to adopt if they if if we as a group decide want to state that that you know talking about changing. Um, the, the time and, and type of part is something yeah. that we as a group will decide together that this is not a foregone conclusion. 
Absolutely. These are all recommendations to the Board of Selectmen, and the final say is the Board's. So uh, the last piece is on acceptable barriers, and um, barriers have to be 36 to 38 inches in height. They, they cannot be permanent barriers. That is, they can't be uh, drilled or cemented into the sidewalk. Um, they must be freestanding, stable, and easily removed. And uh, the base of the barrier uh, must be flat with uh, less than a half an inch thickness so that it doesn't become a hazard to people walking by. Um, it's basically what we've, uh, what we've been proposing and the format of the, uh, the uh, document that was sent out today. So once we get this approved, we can um, really work closely with our businesses to uh, get them up and running under these recommendations as quickly as possible because I know that they want to do that. Greg, like Becky, Todd, if you have anything you want to add to that. No, I think, um, no, covered up well, Jeff, thank you. I think you know, the issue of uh, pedestrian way, making sure there's enough room on the sidewalks. So one option is to make sure that that is a minimum of 36 inches is the, is the, is the minimum standard under building code. Um, and it may make the most sense to have um, fewer tables on the sidewalk itself in order to allow pedestrians to continue through the sidewalk and um, maybe a few tables on the sidewalk and additional tables um, if, if requested in the um, in the parking spot rather than diverting pedestrian traffic um, onto the parking um, parking lane uh, and dealing with the access and ADA issues. Jeff. Right. Yeah, go ahead, Becky. I'm, I'm we done. we additionally we had mentioned that if if um, one of the restaurants would like to if they do wish to use parking spaces and wish to elevate the level to the same height as the yes. sidewalk they may do so but that would be um, for them to do. And also, Jeff Bodmer Turner has mad computer skills. Just, I just had to tell. <laughs> Years of experience. Oh yes. All right. So. Uh, I, I just have a couple quick questions. I yeah, want to no, um, very much appreciate all the work that you guys have done on this. Um, is there consideration for um, a police officer to be? downtown in the downtown area when any of these restaurants are utilizing the outdoor space. And my other wonder is um, how will applications be approved, Greg? Do we come back together as a board at a posted meeting and approve them or are they stamped approved within the office once everything's completed on the application? So that's a process that, that you can decide if you want to authorize staff to approve sort of on a prescriptive basis. You know, if you define the parameters, um, that's one, one way. Or if you prefer, you can, um, you know, meet and review and approve yourself. So that you have the option of going either way on that. Okay. What's the state law on the... Um <clears throat> Uh, extension to the al alcohol al alcoholic beverages um, is is that something that we can do the same treatment for or do we actually have to meet for those at least one town that I spoke to um, said that they were in fact um, the selectmen had authorized the um, town administrative staff the town manager staff to uh, um, approve those applications and then they would be approved as a batch at a select meeting to follow so they wouldn't slow down the process for the um, Rest, right for the restaurant as long as everything in the application was complete 
<coughs> that actually sounds fairly reasonable. We will have enough meetings so that we'll be able to ratify these on a pretty regular basis. Um, <coughs> Okay, other questions from other board members? I had one or two things that I wanted to ask and then we'll get into the, uh, the question and answer period with uh, uh, businesses. Yeah, just, an, uh, just a quick thought. Um, Jeff and Becky, was there input from the restaurant owners or like do, do, we, do we have still yet have any idea what restaurants besides Calas are looking to uh, move their operations outside? At this point, um, we've heard from, um, I believe, all the restaurants that they have an interest in doing this, um, that uh, the restaurant that's in the best shape to do this the most easily is, of course, Bravo, which Bravo. has that uh, patio in front of their store, in yeah. front of their restaurant. Um, and they've already submitted stuff, uh, they submitted an application. Um, uh, the only there's one restaurant that had uh, said that they weren't interested in doing this at this time because of the logistics of it, um, but wanted to uh, remain up to date and posted and may wish to take advantage of this at a future time. Okay. So there's there's varying degrees of uh, of um, information that's been submitted to Greg's office. Um, to the town administrator's office, and um, and that we've also received by email from the businesses about this. Okay, thank you, Jeff. In addition, um, there had been some um, interest um, on the part of both townspeople and um, restaurants, wondering if they could use park space, and um, within the guidelines of the state, the dining must be contiguous with the property. Yeah. So they, they cannot use um, a park that you know, across the street or anything. It must be contiguous with the property. In addition to being contiguous, um, the outdoor dining must be visible from the restaurant or they must have a staff a manager outside right. at all costs. That that's that's in terms of alcohol licensing. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. The 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 idea of doing a tent in the park, um, possibly having a tent that multiple businesses, multiple restaurants uh um utilized uh, or maybe one restaurant that's close to the park might res might utilize um, was put forth and um, it's uh, that's definitely not allowed under any alcohol serving license um, whether food service out there uh, in one of the parks might be done would be a matter for further review by town council and our insurance carrier Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, and I would think, unfortunately, that the guidelines they'd have, that restaurants that have to meet to be off-site like that would be pretty onerous. It's done in brief uh, events. Yeah. Um, where uh, restaurants will, you know, serve under a tent at, sure. at an event. Um, but to do it as a continuous business model. Yeah. Um, I think we might run into some real serious issues in terms of both liability and in terms of um, of uh, the uh, Board of Health. Yeah. Um, I, I, one of the questions I'd asked earlier, and I don't know if we've talked about it yet, is is are there plans at all for the police to have someone a uniformed officer downtown in the downtown area if restaurants are utilizing outdoors? Uh, we did not specifically discuss um, a regular uh, police officer assigned to that duty. 
um, in um, the work that we were doing. Uh, we were primarily concerned about the public safety issues of uh, traffic flow and pedestrian safety and, um, and uh, ADA compliance. Um, so we haven't specifically discussed that. I, I would just ask that that be included in continued discussions because I think it does go to public safety in general. Yep, we need to be able to make sure we get the public safety vehicles to be able to traverse the streets if necessary. But I think um, I think having a police officer, you know, on foot patrol is um, probably a, a good community policing piece. That's all. That would be something for Greg and Todd to uh, respond yep. to at this point. Hi, Muffin. Can you hear me? It's Todd. I, I can. Yeah, I, was, I was having trouble un unmuting. I didn't answer it earlier. But, um, you know, as, as Jeff uh, uh, said, there was no discussion on that. And uh, with all the uh, significant staffing issues that we're running into recently, that pretty much uh, hasn't been a plan. But if we can take it on a case-by-case -case basis, once the, once the uh, dining is uh, up and running, and if we determine that we need someone down there uh, on a on a permanent basis, then then that's what we'll do. But it might be a case where you know the regular patrol officer is, is making a swing through and taking a, a stroll, something like that. I think might be yeah. sufficient. That, that that was my next thing. I mean, I I think rather than dedicating someone down there, it, it, you know, the regular patrol would, would be able to handle it. Yeah, I'd just like to go on the record in the minutes stating that I think it's a important piece that there's presence down there for many no. reasons. No, I agree. I would agree too, Thank Martha. You. I think that's a good idea. You know, we, we, we pledged from the outset to figure out how best to help all the businesses, you know, with what we can, and I feel like that's that's one of the pieces that we need to help with. So I, I have a, one or two um, questions about uh, comments around the parking, but I wanted to, Arthur, Arthur, did you have any comments you wanted to make here? No, I, I think it's, uh, it sounds like good planning, and um, you know, I think it's very important that we get our businesses back up and running. So, you know, the, 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 the intent, uh, sounds like some of the details still are a little to be worked out. Um, I, I, you know, speaking just myself, I, I, I think that the, other than um, Kayla's, it, it seems just maybe mathematically like it's going to be hard for any of the restaurants to really make this a, a, a big sustainable revenue generator based off of the social distancing and the square footage that we're talking about. So I, I think that, um, you know, I, I, I do think that we should look at ways of making public spaces available, even if it's without liquor licenses, like things like the Chowder House or having the town create opportunities for equal access to public space uh, because of the unusual time we're in, if these restaurants are interested. Because I think the goal uh, is obviously generate whatever revenue you can, but I think it's going to be very difficult. I think all these restaurants would prefer to be back inside and, and working under their traditional models. Um, and so I think it's, um, if, if the goal really is for getting business back to, on their feet and getting people out and getting people reoriented with our restaurants, then I think we should figure out ways to really support that. And I think this, this sidewalk uh, idea is great, but I think there may be other ways of doing it as well. All right, just a, that's, a, that's a really important comment, and I couldn't agree with you more. Um, there's uh, one comment in response that I'd like to make, which is that in phase two, step two, this is phase two, step one, uh, the governor is talking about opening indoor dining, um, and there will have to be social distancing there. So it may be possible with a combination of outdoor seating and indoor seating for a restaurant to come up to capacity um, in, uh, in terms of their pre-COVID capacity. Um, to, there's going to be real limitations on, on 
people standing or sitting at a uh, bar in a restaurant um, for some time. I'm not sure how long. I don't know whether that's going to come in under phase two, step two or not. But phase two, step two does include in indoor dining. Arthur, I would like to make a comment as well, if I may. Um, under a number of the state guidelines, um, people are not allowed to line up to, a, to go to the restaurant. They can give a phone number, but they have to await a text or a phone call. They cannot stand and wait in line. That's one thing. Um, so there are, there are a lot of guidelines. And in terms of helping the restaurant, I agree 100%. I will also say that while we can be um, more restrictive than the guidelines, we cannot be less restrictive than the state guidelines. So we definitely have some significant constraints within which we must work. Um, but I think that you know, the more ideas people want to give in terms of, of possible ideas or ways to help, it sure doesn't hurt to have someone give an idea. I think that's fantastic. So the purposes, for the purposes of t uh, the meeting tonight and uh, uh, keeping things as streamlined as possible, and I think we're, we're certainly going to be revisiting uh, through the coming weeks and months uh, how uh, we're going to support the businesses or can support the businesses. Tonight I'd like to focus on this proposal which is the uh, immediately contiguous sidewalk dining uh, and see if we can get through this part first and then um, and we can see if, if there are other options in the future. Um, I had a, a question or comment around the parking spaces and their use. And so we've been back and forth, I know, in, in some discussions about whether or not the dining would be on the sidewalk or whether or not the dining would be in the parking spaces. Some people have advocated both ways. Um, is uh, part of what we're trying to do here tonight um, to make a decision about that? Or is it the intent, is, and when you guys had your, your working group sessions, was it the intent that that be managed on a case-by-case -case basis to decide what was the most appropriate for the, the space and, uh, and for the, the restaurant? Greg, do you want to respond to that? Sure, I'll jump in. <laughs> um, yeah, I think, I think the feeling was that um, it would be case by case and that if the, however, if um, the pedestrians were going to be rerouted to the, uh, the street, to the parking lane, that it had to be, um, you know, accessible, handicap accessible. And that, that would be the owner's responsibility to do. Um, so I think the group was open to either approach in terms of is the parking lane used for pedestrians or is it used for uh, dining, um, but that there are certain conditions that would have to be met if it's going to be used for pedestrians. Okay. All right. Uh, then I think what I would I think what I'd like to do is um, uh, open up for questions and answers prioritizing the business owners first and, and then members of the public. By the way, can folks hear me okay or no? Uh, board members? Uh, you're a little soft. A little soft. All right, I'll try to be louder. Is that better? <laughs> that is better. <laughs> okay, good. Eli, may I make one more comment before we go to the um, business people? Yeah, yeah go ahead. Um, and that was when we, when we were talking about layout, um, I believe we felt that the restaurants might have a better idea of um, what layouts might best work for them than would we. Um, but as lo so as long as they met the guidelines, that's what we were concerned with, as opposed to providing them with a layout they could use. Okay. Jeff, does that sound right to you? Yes. Okay. okay. Yeah, just I, I would say in, in our discussions, Eli, it's not a one-size-fits-all at all. Um, there's there's going to be a, a need for a lot of innovation as long as, as Becky said, we stay within the guidelines for uh, 
COVID safety. Okay. Right. And to that end, uh, stressing and encouraging owners to look at non uh, sidewalk and non street options as much as possible, either a side yard or a back parking area, a, a deck area that could be expanded or attempted. Um, so, really encouraging. Uh, the restaurant folks to look at all all options and not just assume that the the sidewalk is is the only option. And the guidelines say that they do say that um, you know all other seating options should be looked at prior to um, the parking spaces. Okay. All right, um, I'm going to go ahead and open this up to question and answers. And by the way, there's a, so this is just around the mechanics of uh, the dining areas for the um, uh, restaurants. We also had some items related to parking uh, and changing the parking hours and changing the status of the Masco parking lot for resident and non-resident parking. We'll take that up after we take up these initial guidelines. Um, and I, again, there, we, we have a fair bit to get through on this, so I'm going to try and uh, streamline this as much as I can. All right, question and answer time. Um, uh, if you want to make a comment on the outside dining, uh, go ahead, and if you are on the phone, you can press star six, and I will take people in order and uh, uh, ask them to identify themselves and where they're, where they're from. And if you're on uh, the desktop interface, just uh, uh, add yourself to the queue and I'll uh, unmute you. So uh, business owners, if, I know I saw some of you out there. If you're, you're there and uh, interested and willing to uh, talk, please uh, go ahead now and, and uh, queue up. Or you can just type into the chat and I'll take it there. Oh yes, everybody's muted. Board members are coming back. I think I got all the board members. And I don't have any uh, questions or comments so far from folks in the queue. Ah, Marianne Wood, is there a specific application for outside dining? Uh, yes, Jeff, do you want to uh, answer that? Uh, the document that we're talking about right now, Marianne, is uh, the specific application for outside dining. What we wanted to do, even though um, people have submitted certain pieces of information um, to us uh, and to uh, the town administrator's office, um, what we wanted to do was to have one single document that people would um, be able to go through and fill, fill out and submit. Um, so yes, and that document will become available once the board approves it tonight. Does that answer your question? Good. Yep. All right. I'm amazed that we don't have any questions or comments from business owners. Uh, I will take any. It may be a little hard, Eli, because they don't have the document in front of them. Yeah. Um, oh, we do have one from a wireless caller. All right. So, Hello. Yes. Uh, could you state your name and your uh, address and uh, and your question? Yes. It's Beth Gibley from Bravo by the Sea at 40 Beach Street. And I did submit my documents. And I was asked to um, add a few things to them, which I did. 
and I believe I got them in today, and I'm wondering, will I be able to open for outdoor dining tomorrow? So if we, if we were to approve this tonight and um, give authority to town administrator to sign off on those documents as we suggested we might earlier in the evening, then I think the answer to that is yes. Um, there would be, there would be a, you would have to be able to meet the criteria in uh, the application, but if you did so, I don't see why not. Greg, do you have any thoughts there? No, I think that's correct, Eli. I mean, in, 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 in Bravo's case here, they already have outdoor dining, um, so they absolutely could use what they already have. Um, if they are looking to expand that, then that, that's what we need to approve. Um, and again, if, if the board approves, Proves things tonight. Am I saying that wrong, Becky? <laughs> um, I, I the the difference being that any outdoor seating. I'm sorry, Greg. Right now has to be completely enclosed. Theirs has not been enclosed in the past, and the um, enclosure that Beth provided is not specifically what we had discussed earlier in terms of acceptable. Um, um, however, I think that's something we could discuss. Um, I your concern. However, they are they're stanchions. So if I could describe them, they're black stanchions. Stanchions. Uh, stanchions I've seen them. Have yeah, we we have the pictures of those. So it's not it's not that that it's not that we're saying they're not okay. We're just still trying to formulate what our guidelines are, and those specifically are outside of the guidelines. So we would have to then include those. However, for your property, they would work. The rest of the sidewalk properties, they would not. So either we have to have uniform um, perimeters uh, or further discuss if somebody can have different ones under a different situation. Does that make sense? Yes, and I completely understand that. And I am willing to change them, but may I start with them? And then I need a little time to have someone come build the barrier that would be better. I agree. But I need more time to do that. Just a few days. Eli? Well, uh, you know, I'm, I think uh, being a little flexible here is reasonable. I think if an application uh, was made where they asserted that they were going to do that in the application, then I, I think it, that's, that sort of thing is very reasonable. I think we should be working with the business owners here. Yep. And Beth, yep. outdoor seating there for, all, you know, this is your third year, right, Beth? First summer, and I've had outdoor seating in the past. Yeah, so that's right. Beth, have you you've resubmitted or submitted an amendment for um, your uh, premises license, correct? Yes, I did, and I sent it okay. to Becky just okay. right before this. <laughs> okay. Um, so, I'll, I'll you know, send it down. Those documents just need to be quickly reviewed. And like you said, you've been up and running before. And um, we can, um, from my point of view, we could certainly work around the uh, stanchion issue until um, you had something that was working. Sure. I, I mean, I prefer something more substantial than stanchions. But this is, you know, this is okay for the time being. And I will build something that is more permanent or whatever you would like me to build. <laughs> well, it's not us. It's the state. Okay, the state. And thank you all. Thank you. This has been very interesting. And I am happy that you are being so diligent because it's important for the safety of our guests. Thanks, Beth, and good luck this summer. Yes. I agree. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I need it. I know. Right. Well, thanks very much. So we are uh, making progress here. Um, Thank you all. Have a good night.
I'll Thank just you, keep too. listening. Yep. <clears throat> All right. Um, so I don't see any other people queuing up for questions. There are a few comments which I think have been mostly addressed in our interchange with um, Beth. So. Uh, <clears throat> I think what I'd like to do is move the board discussion on to um, the recommendations regarding parking hours and parking lots, which I hope won't take. Eli, long. before you do that, yep. um, I think we need to <clears throat> have a formal motion to adopt this document as the application form that um, we pass out to. Uh, to uh, the restaurants and um, for them to use to uh, guide their efforts. Oh, I, I was going to do that uh, after we did the parking, but if you want to do it now, I'm perfectly fine to do it now. I, I um, see the two issues as separate, um, but yeah, that that's fair. That's reasonable. Uh, so unless uh, board members have any uh, uh, other things that they want to say, or um, uh, I guess we can go ahead and take a vote on this now. Um, uh, Muffin, Arthur, any comments? No, I'm all set. All right. So I'll take a motion to approve the um, guidelines for temporary outdoor dining as presented uh, to the board this evening um, <coughs> with applications to be uh, approved um, uh, on an as uh, first, first come, first serve basis by the uh, town, town administrator uh, to be ratified by the board of selectmen uh, at a later meetings. So moved. Any uh, second there? No, come on. <laughs> Arthur, speak up. <laughs> He's probably muted. I'll second it. <laughs> Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Well, do a roll call vote. Drum up and Aye. Actually, you know what? Arthur not speaking up makes me just think. Hang on. Before we vote. And there is one one question in the queue which I'll take after this. Arthur, can you hear us? Hmm. So he may have been, you know, wanting to say something all along and not. Arthur, you're muted. Can you say anything? Arthur, can you hear us? You there? Well, he says he's muted himself, and his line cannot be unmuted. <laughs> Which Arthur. is exactly the message I get. Yep. Uh, do so you have any not comments? Just me. Do you have any comments <laughs> that you want to make, or you we've missed on so far? Because I think you're going to have to uh, uh, sign off and sign back in and get unmuted. <laughs> Arthur, can you hear me? Not, not if you can hear me. Wow. I'm not that quiet. All right, hold on, folks. Oh, I love this. I know that Greg doesn't want to hear this, but I think one of the things that we need to address between now and our next meeting is the uh, software that we're working with. <laughs> yeah, we've, we've been looking into alternatives. <laughs> Thank you, Marianne. I don't think Zoom is going to do it. No. Uh, 
uh, dialed in on the phone. So I should unmute his phone. Can you? Uh, Hi, sir. Can you hear us? Yes, thank you. Did you have any comments on no so far? Comments. Two comments. Go for it. No. No. No comments. No, no comments. Excellent. Okay. Um, so there was a motion and a second, uh, and uh, there was no discussion. So, again, we're going to have a roll call vote. Muffin. Yes. Uh, Mr. Bob McTurner. Yes. Ms. Jakes. Yes. Arthur. Yep. And I vote yes as well. All right, so that's phase one. And folks, um, this is, uh, as always, this is a process that we are, uh, it's, we're, it's going to be dynamic. We're going to see how it goes, and if we need to change it, we will change it. Um, uh, and uh, I hope everybody bears with us. At the very least, it'll be interesting. <coughs> Okay, now let's move on to parking lots, uh, the parking lots and the hours of parking. There were two proposals there, I believe. One was with respect to the parking hours, and there was discussion of maybe increasing the hourly parking to three hours from two hours on a temporary basis. Um, so, um, uh, what was, uh, Jeff, did, did you want to... Uh, Discuss that at all, or uh, Todd? You, I, I prefer if Todd or Greg uh, grab this one so that they could specify the areas that we're talking about. The idea was that we heard from businesses that they were concerned that um, resident parking had uh, been expanded to control beach access. Um, and that it cut into that it's cutting going to cut into uh, access for uh, non-residents to shop and be in town and go to restaurants. Um, so we wanted we were trying to respond to that. So if Greg and Todd could handle that, that'd be great. So I can jump in. Um, so I think the first area to talk about is, is, is Masco, Masco Normal Park, and the in the parking lot off street. Um, in the past, you know, the majority of that is, is resident only with sticker. There are parking spaces um, traditionally for, uh, for non-residents, but they have not had a time limit. And so I think what might be beneficial here, and Todd suggested it, was that the non-resident parking areas um, be reestablished and that they have a three-hour time limit so that that is not used for people who are staying all day long that there is some turnover, but it's a long enough parking period for people to have a meal and also to do some shopping. So that was one area to, uh, to modify. And then in terms of street parking, um, you know, reestablish that it's, it's um, two, well, at a minimum reestablish the two hour parking for residents or non-residents in the, on Beach Street. Uh, right now, along uh, Beach Street from the railroad tracks to Tomasco Normal Park, we temporarily made it resident only. So we established that as uh, resident or non-resident. And then whether or not some of the street parking should also be three-hour um, as well was um, uh, a suggestion, actually, I think that came from one of the business owners, and we thought it would be worth discussing tonight as well. So, Todd, you're certainly welcome to chime in and add to that. He's probably muted. Uh, if Todd's in <laughs> Is anybody else hearing that kind of reverb? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. I don't know if that's the, I get feedback, whatever. Uh, you are uh, not muted as far as I can tell, but, well, you, I believe you are muted because you muted yourself. Uh, 
right, let's uh, come back to that. Let's come back to him if we can uh, hear from him. Todd, we're going to need you to um, probably call in again or unmute yourself. Um, it says right now that you have no audio. Um, so I, I don't know. I'm a little um, personally reluctant to jump up to three-hour parking. Um, uh, a little concerned that we... Um, excuse me, Eli. Yep. Todd just Todd just let me know that he has had the same problem that I'm having. Yeah. So he may need to have to call back in. Yeah. What's that? Have him call back in, hang up and call back in. Okay. Um. <coughs> All right, so I'm I'm a little reluctant right now to jump to three-hour um, parking because I don't think I really understand um, how and why that's that's going to have a real effect. Uh, I think what I'd probably prefer to do is to re-enable some non-resident parking uh, where we traditionally have it and um, <coughs> work with the. Uh, fairly dramatic changes that we've got already with respect to the sidewalk dining and see where that takes us. <coughs> uh, that's my personal leaning right now. Other board members? So again, I'd encourage us to talk about two separate areas. One is the street parking, on street parking, versus um, the Masco parking. So right now, right now it's, it's resident only with no time limit in Masco. And there has always traditionally been um, oh, a dozen or more uh, non-resident parking that also was unlimited. So the the, the idea to make Masco um, available to non-residents but on a three-hour limit, whereas in the past it's been unlimited. Oh, I see. <clears throat> and then and then you can talk about the street parking either. You know, right currently all street parking is two hours. Um, you can keep it that way. Um, if, if you prefer, but I think at a minimum it would make sense to change the mass Masconomal Park parking area for non-residents to a maximum maximum of three hours. Yeah, that that, that makes sense. Uh, Todd, I think I've got you back. Todd, you there? Hello, Todd. <laughs> All right. Other board members have comments on Greg's uh, comments about Masco and three-hour parking there. I, I'm in agreement. I think that that's a, uh, something we should do. Which? So change the non-resident parking in the Masco normal parking lot to be three hours. Yeah. Eli, it's Todd. Can you hear me now? Yay! Hi, Todd. Fine. Welcome back. <laughs> yeah. All right. So we were, we were talking about the what the parking on the, the 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 streets. The only recommendation I think Greg covered it pretty much. The only recommendation is that in some areas, uh, especially like on Electric Light Hill, going up Summer Street, that's a one-hour parking zone. So if we want to be consistent, we should change them all to. Two or three or you know, the size. Todd, does it make it um, if we have all the parking throughout uniform, for example, on the streets and in Masco, is it is, is it a problem if we have Masco as one thing, for example, three hours at Masco and two hours on the street? Is that any Problem. I don't think I don't think it's a huge problem. I think it's it's just more consistent and easier for the parking enforcement to enforce if it's all uniform, uh, you know, hourly parking. Thank you. Comments from other board members. So, 
I, I might have missed something. I apologize. What are we talking about doing with the street parking, changing it from its current status? Two different things, Muffin. One is changing it from resident only to anybody yeah. can park there. And so that's one. And the other other component would be do we change it from two hours to, or one hour right now to three hour limit or two hours. Where there, well, so we have those posted right now, right? Um, uh, everywhere in town where there's one hour, two hour limitations. Uh, and in some cases, 15 minute limitations, we have those posted. So we're talking about essentially reverting our parking situation to what it was previously before we put restrictions on it in March. And then uh, in some cases moving those up to um, uh, three hour uh, spots. And, I, and as I understood what Todd said, it was he was suggesting that we make them all uniform. Um, is that right? However, Todd? I would I would like to say that we that the 15 minute spots or the 30 minute spots that we have, especially in front of the, the uh, post office, just those uh, continue to remain the same. Yeah. So you're suggesting that the one hour and two hour spots all be temporarily made a uniform three hours. Correct. Three hours just seems like a long time for a car to turn over so that is that going to negatively impact some of our, our businesses non -res restaurant businesses well the thought was muffin that as opposed to just coming and dining it might afford um, time to do both shopping and dining um, but but this is a work in progress. We can, we can, as we all know, we can set one thing up and modify it. True. Yeah, I, you know, I've got the same concerns as Muffin on the three-hour parking. Well, then why don't we try two and see where we go from there? Yeah, have any of the, we haven't had retail businesses weigh in, have we? There was one business I have. for the three hour, right? Greg? We've had, we've had some businesses um, comment that they felt that the two hour parking was too short. Um, you get different opinions, different business businesses. Yeah. Um, you know, for someone to have a meal and to go shopping, two hours is, is pretty short. Um, but for someone just to run into a store, you know, that, that's certainly plenty. <laughs> so it just depends what they're doing. Uh, right. Yeah, so I, I, I'd be more inclined to increase Masconomo for this three hour piece and leave the street parking the way it is right now because we don't even know what restaurants in the end are going to open and I and I think we just need to take some baby steps with the street parking for now. Muffin is that are you saying um, leave it one hour and resident only or one hour and anybody? Um, one hour and anybody. Okay. So, in other words, revert it to our current status. Yes. Isn't current resident only? No. In some places, it's resident only, but a lot of the parking spaces downtown, especially where they're hourly, are are not specific. I'm 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 sorry. Um, I was referring I'm not clearly, but meaning Reed Park. So we're talking about also having Reed Park parking uh, be for anybody as well, resident, non-resident. Yes, reverting back to what it always was. Okay. Okay. Baby steps aren't bad. It's often easier to expand than it is to contract. Right. 
so right now the, the leaning is to simply revert to where we were before. Except yeah, for Masco. Except at Masco. Except the center part of Masco. Yeah. And I think we would keep the existing 15 minute parking areas. Um, we did create one at uh, across from Captain Bessie's because of the because of pickup. Yep. Yep. I think it might make sense to keep that. Yep. And um, a clarification, Greg, we are we are planning on opening parking at Masconoma. I mean, at Singing Beach for residents only this weekend. Is that correct? That's what's on your docket in the, as soon as you finish this discussion. Yes. Okay, I'm stopping with that. Done. <laughs> Greg, are there any okay. park? Greg and Todd, can you uh, remind me whether there is any parking? For two hours in the downtown? The majority is, is two hours in the downtown. And some of it going up Summer Street is one hour. Right. And that's one hour because what, Todd? It's just the way it's always been. I'm not sure if there's a specific reason. There was actually a review of all the um, the hourly parking times of several years ago um, when we um, we did a review, review with a parking committee that we set up temporarily, and they went we, they went through and they pretty thoroughly um, they talked to a lot of businesses. That's how we got some of the 15 minute spots that we talked about. Um, so I'd I'd rather not um, get into here in this meeting. Um, Tinkering with that too much. If we have some specific temporary changes that we'd like to make, I can. I, I would. It. I would like to propose the temporary change that, other than the areas that are marked for 15 or 30 minutes, that we move um, everything to two hours because we may lose as many as eight parking spaces in in the central business district um, to restaurant dining, and um, two hours. Uh, may seem like a long time uh, to uh, go and grab something to eat, but if you want to, if you want to shop, go to the retail stores and grab something to eat. Two hours is is tight. So uh, just as a temporary measure, um, you know, in that area that's one hour now, that we uh, change that um, to two hours and three hours in Masconomo. Jeff, that makes a very good point. Because the whole idea of making any adjustments to parking, and I, I understand that the, that this has been studied and proposed and dealt with by people who have a lot more wisdom and, and energy than I have. Um, but the whole idea was to try and do some compensation for spaces that we lose to support our restaurants. Yeah. Okay. And again, this is something. And that, that was we, that was from the business community. Again, this is something that we can and will revisit. I'm I'm sure. So. And then, and then the other piece, just to try to free up parking, is to very much encourage employees of the various shops and restaurants Absolutely. to not use, um, you know, street parking for sure, um, and to use the more satellite parking areas, whether it be behind town hall. Um, up on Norwood or even going over to the high school. Um, if we can encourage that, that, that could free up quite a bit of parking in the immediate uh, business area. Okay. Um, all right, so what I'd like to do is uh, get a motion to, and this is this is the way I think it is, um, somebody can give me a friendly correction if if the, if I'm wrong. We're we're going to want a motion to revert the parking to the state it was in prior to our restriction of, to resident only parking at the end of March, and to uh, in addition change the non-resident parking in Masconomo uh, Park to three hours. And then for the one hour parking going out of town up Summer Street to make that temporarily two hour parking. Is that correct? Yes. Sir. Can I ask you a question? Uh, how, how, um, how is, there's a comment in the chat about the beach being opened eventually uh, to all 
visitors. H how is that going to be reconciled with people using the parking lot at Masconoma for the beach for three hours now? Well, that's not that's, even. We're going to. We're going right to. That's not on the table. We're going to talk about that later. And that the, all of these things will change these things as we need to as we update the state of the the town. This is to uh, deal with the current state and the current set of problems that we're facing. So this could be revised in a matter of a week or two weeks? I'm not going to say a week or two weeks. I'm not going to say when we're going to revise it. We'll revise it when we need to revise it. Not putting timelines on it. So I guess asking the question from the other angle then, uh, what is the limit on this so that the changes to parking don't become an assumed right or established way? Uh, well, I'm sorry. What? There, there, you can't make an. You can't establish a right just because. I'm, well, I'm it's establishing a precedent of parking being under a certain terms. So if if this doesn't have a, a fixed point of any way of when this is actually limited, is this is this in perpetuity in, in the way that it's constructed no. right now, or is there a limit to when this is actually expiring, so that it doesn't become something that is referenced as that has been changed and that we lived under the change, why can't we live like this for good? No, it's a, it's a, it's a temporary change, but to put some more um, shape on it, uh, I would say it's a temporary change uh, who, that's maximum duration would be the time period that we have the uh, current temporary outdoor dining. Um, what was the limit uh, on that? That was one of the questions I had about the, the outdoor dining is that it didn't really say when that period ended. So the law, state law is November 1st. Or sooner, the, the, both the state... Yeah, the state law can change, we can move into a freer world, but then you've established the right to have outdoor dining, so why... No. No, this no. is established as purely temporary. Everything I'm says that. temporary and that it's not precedent setting. If I'm challenging precedent, you've established the ability to do outdoor dining even with COVID going away, why can't that actually be something that is allowable in the town going forward in a post-COVID world? It could be, but you would have to have new zoning. So, is, is in fact, I didn't see that in the terms of the sidewalk dining. I don't see it in the terms of these changes to the parking. Are we tying it to a date in November where this actually would be expiring? The maximum length it could continue is November 1st. Is that, Can't that, go beyond that November 1st. That's, that's, Arthur, that is in the documents in terms of the state. I didn't see it, Jeff. I didn't see it. So if it's there, that's great. It, it's I, in the I documents in terms of the state guidelines. But I didn't see a link of what we're doing in terms of policy to that date. But if it's inferred, if, if that's what you're saying, then, then I, I, I guess we're good. There is a link in there. You have to open the link, and it's within the no, link. No, I, I understand what you're saying, Arthur. It, no, not, it is not a digital link. I'm I get talking it. about I get it. a logical link. No, nope. I get it. The state, the state policies, Arthur, are, um, are, as Becky mentioned earlier, something that we can be stricter than, but we cannot uh, more, be more lenient than. So. The state policy is that this all ends November 1st, unless the governor rescinds it sooner. And uh, so that's the limit of, of the authority that we have to make any of these changes. Um, so yeah, I'm not, I'm not, in, ter in terms, of, in terms of, of businesses. What I'm pointing out is that we've, we're establishing new ways of operating in the town on, because of the circumstances. When the circumstances end, we have set the precedent for operating in a different way. Even when the state regulations expire and we go back to, let's say, quote, unquote, the normal way of doing things, we've established the ability in the town to, to operate sidewalk dining, which actually I think is a great thing. Are we, are, we, are we going to then be able to pull that back and say that's actually not the way that we want to operate in a post-COVID world? With We did that only because of the circumstances of COVID. We haven't established something. And similar to the parking hours, we've, we've adjusted the parking hours in order to make the COVID-era operations of the town more viable. But post-COVID, post-November, for example, you know, are these hours going going to revert back to a pre-COVID way of operating? 
And so this does not include Bravo. Well, so Bravo let, hold up, already. hold up, folks. Hold up, please. Um, so, Arthur, uh, you're, you're asking questions, but I want to know if you – uh, have any suggestion for a change to the verbiage that we have here or anything or else if you're just raising the potential would be actually issue. create some sort of date by which we're going to review the performance of these changes so that they, be, they actually are pre-built to expire. Otherwise, if we leave it open-ended, as it seems like they are, it becomes something that could be challenged. Well, then you're going to need to make a separate motion because we've already voted on the, uh, on the guidelines. Yeah, well, I got, I, you know, we had technical difficulties with the, uh, the platform here, because that was one of the things I was trying to point out. But we, we can move on. I'm, I'm just, I'm, I, uh, I will no longer be with this board in a matter of weeks, so I'm just pointing out something that this board will have to contend with. Arthur, you can make a motion. You can make a motion tonight. You're still a board member. You can make a well, motion on the tonight. Parking, I would make a motion have... that we set a date of, let's say, August 1st, where we review the performance of this in the interest of the residents, in the interest of the businesses, in the interest of the town. I and would if you like it, we can I think, it. I think that's a very good like idea. Yeah. A pre-built way of ending it. Yep. I think that's... Uh, I, I have no problem with reviewing it, but... To say to restaurants, you're going to make these investments in these uh, various changes, and it may all go away on August 1st. Um, I don't know. Uh, well, I mean, we, we've said all along that we were potentially going to. We were going to see how this goes and change things as we need to to ad adapt to the circumstances. So I'm okay with August 1st. September 1st. I, don't, I mean, I, I think it needs to be a date somewhere that there's a fixed point of where this policy has an expiration, and it's not necessarily the state's guidelines in November. That's fine. It's heard. Let's pick a date, and let's move on. So I would just pick a, a meeting date. So pick, you know, your first meeting in August, your first meeting in September. Um, I'm going to go with the first meeting in August. Any objections? Nope. Except that as I prefer down. September. You prefer September? Muffin? August 1st is fine. I, I feel like I'm determining something for the next board, so. And it's, again, it's just a review, so yeah. we'll, we'll move it again as needed. I'm fine with August 1st. Uh, I don't think this is a huge thing. Um, so can we say the first meeting in August? But, sorry, yes, sorry, first meeting in August. And that's an amendment to my previous motion, or rather the previous motion regarding um, accepting uh, changes to parking in town, um, temporary changes to parking in town. So can I have that motion, please? So moved. I guess second. Second. Any discussion? Roll call vote. Ms. Driscoll? Okay. No, Ms. Driscoll, please come back. <laughs> no audio. I didn't do anything. I swear to God. Muffin, you there? <laughs> oh, Lord. All right, let's do it this way. Um, Mr. Steiner. Mr. Bob Turner. Yes. Uh, Ms. Jakes. Yes. Mr. Bowling. Can you hear yes. me? Yes, I can. What's your vote? Y yes. Thank you. All right. So that's the parking. And we are going to take care of um, the temporary dining, which is constrained by the state. And... Uh, <laughs> That's it for the outside dining section of this meeting. Um, oh, I have an apology to make. Mr. Glass, you've been sitting there in the question and answer queue for a long time, and I spaced it due to, well, any number of reasons. Um, I'm going to unmute you to see if your question is still relevant. I apologize. Chris Glass, you there? No. OK. 
Okay. No, nope, apparently not. All right. Now we're going to move on to uh, reviewing the stats of reopening the parks and beaches. Greg, do you want to uh, dis uh, go through what the Parks and Rec director has um, proposed? Yes, happy to. Thank you. Um, so, first to back up, the last few weeks have gone very smoothly. Um, there have been very little problems at, at the beach in managing um, the resident only. Um, there's been a few issues sort of after hours, but we have adjusted staffing hours. The uh, police have stayed longer, um, and most of those issues have, have gone away. So overall, um, a very smooth start, um, um, despite some concerns and, and some unknowns. Um, so both the police and the Park and Rec uh, Department feel that they are ready to move forward with um, opening the beach beaches, uh, basically our phase three, which in essence matches the governor's uh, phase two um, guidelines for, for beaches. It would still remain resident only. Um, staff has uh, been trained on the cleaning procedures that have been put out by the state and the CDC for public bathrooms. Um, we've added sanitizing stations and blocked up all the showers and the changing stalls. Um, and have um, altered the flow of traffic in the bathhouse so that it is one-way foot traffic and it will be monitored in terms of the numbers that are using the bathhouse at one time um, just for the restrooms. Um, uh, staff will limit the numbers as I say and there will be a, a waiting line with six foot separation. Um, on the beach itself people will be required to maintain 12 foot separations between the groups, and those groups will be limited to no more than 10 per group, encourage family only. Um, there will be no uh, contact gains allowed. Again, these are the state guidelines that we're adopting here. The parking lot will be open to residents only. Uh, the canteen will be open with some restrictions in terms of the number of staff they're allowed, and also maintaining that six foot separation with the, with the line as people come up to the to counter for the canteen. Um, Parks and Rec can suggest that if the beach uh, parking lot is full, that they would uh, notify that on the sign further up or down Beach Street, and that um, it would reopen again in the, in the mid-afternoon rather than sort of monitoring it, you know, in 15-minute increments or, you know, constantly. Um, as has been the case in the past. What we're trying to avoid is a lineup at the parking lot and taking a lot of staff trying to manage the parking lot. Um, we feel that staff are going to be better utilized um, by continually cleaning the restrooms and the bathhouse as well as um, monitoring the distancing on the beach itself. And so it would be easier uh, once the lot is filled, then the, to say, okay, we're closed and we'll open up in a few more hours, assuming that people, so the morning crew leaves and the afternoon crew uh, can be coming in, afternoon shift can be coming in for visitors. Um, and then, um, as I said, this would be for a resident only uh, for our phase, uh, for our phase three, and um, waiting until how things progress, if they do, um, for perhaps limited non-resident, but that's a decision to be made down, down the road here. Um, similarly, Tux, uh, the restroom at Tux would be opened up and, and staffed uh, there on weekends as well. Um, uh, and you know, utilizing the beach, small beach there at Tux would be following the same standards, the 12-foot separation uh, for any people on the beach. And then similarly, White Beach, um, same rules, and that the parking area there could be open, but again for resident only. So the uh, staff is comfortable, both police and, and Park and Rec are comfortable uh, moving towards this phase three um, this week, if you're in, so inclined to approve that. Um, so if you were inclined to approve it, then they will be ready um, in the next day or two, and certainly could be ready for this weekend. Questions or comments from the board? 
Um, Greg, you mentioned touch point bathrooms. Would they only be open on the weekends because there's staff up there, or are they going to be staffed during the week and open? Um, the thought would be that they would be open during the week. Um, you know, the, you tend not to get lines there, and um, but in terms of, of cleaning, those would be checked and cleaned daily. Okay. Greg. Yes. So will they still um, will town stickers still be on sale at Singing Beach for a while longer? Yes, for residents only. Yes. Right. Yeah. Thank you. So again, you know, as people enter and exit the beach, uh, the mask face coverings are, are required. Um, so the, the distancing is still important as people. Um, enter and leave the beach area. Obviously, once you get to your patch of sand, you, you're, you're allowed to take off your, your face covering and, and enjoy um, enjoy the beach that way. Where will we have the guidelines posted? Will they be on a, a board at the beach um, in terms of um, how far apart people are supposed to be, um, no contact sports, things like that? Yes, yes, so they do have um, signage reminding people what the rules are. Thank you. Other board members. I'm good on uh, on this plan. I think it's uh, what we've been trying to get to and the, uh -huh. uh, the metrics of the that the governor announced on Saturday um, sound really much much better than uh, where we have been three weeks ago, two weeks ago, and one week ago. So we're moving in the right direction, and hopefully this will, uh, with maintaining social distance, and um, will allow us to uh, utilize the beach to a greater, much greater extent. Okay, uh, I'm in agreement uh, in in general with the statements by the other board members. So the uh, the, the start date for this would be um, probably about the end of it, the end of this week for this weekend, right? And allow the staff to finish their final prep. Uh, I'm sorry, did I say that again? The start date for this would be uh, the for this weekend, right? To allow the board and the staff to finish their final prep. Uh, they're fine with. Uh, they're fine sooner. They actually would like a few days to uh, during the week. So if you wanted to do it, say Thursday, that would per that's perfectly fine. That gives them a couple of days to um, try it out before potentially larger crowds come. Yeah, uh, that makes sense. All right. So this is again resident only. Um, <coughs> Can uh, can I get a uh, unless there's uh, other questions or comments from the board? Can I get a motion uh, regarding this proposal? So motion motion to support the um, proposal from the Parks and Rec director. Uh, get a second. Second. Okay. Any discussion? Um, uh, I, I would Eli. Yep. Go ahead, Mike. I would just I would just like to um, thank Cheryl and the yes. Parks and Rec yes. Department and the Chief of Police for putting all of the time and effort into the plans that they have, and I'd like to thank the board for taking the appropriate time and due diligence to this entire process. I don't think there was any one of us that didn't want to ever open the beach. And I, I'm proud of the way that we've gone about utilizing the process and the guidelines and the work that the town employees have done so that the residents of the town can get on the beach and enjoy it. And I, I just want to thank everybody for all of their extra work in getting us to this point. I, I second that, Muffin, and I also just want to say thank you, Greg, for putting in 
for your extra time as well. Agreed. You know, we all we all know how much the how important the beach is to everyone in this community. And taking the time that we took to put the guidelines in place and take baby steps, I believe will only end with a successful summer on the beach for everyone. And and for me and I believe for the rest of us that was the ultimate goal when we found ourselves in the position of having to close the beach down much to the dismay of so many people in town and I think by doing it the way we did it then we found ourselves on June 8th being able to open up a, a treasured space for everyone to enjoy. Well said Muffin, thank you. Agreed. With that, let's uh, vote. Yeah, all right, <laughs> we're going to do a roll call vote. Ms. Driscoll? Yes. That's a surprise. Ms. Jason? <laughs> yes. Mr. Steiner? Yes. Mr. Bob Turner? Absolutely yes. Mr. Bowling votes yes. All right. Woo so that concludes our um, uh, visit with COVID-19 updates for the week. <coughs> um, uh, remaining on the agenda is a discussion and a ratific potential ratification of a new fire chief <coughs> who I hope is on the phone and I will end it <laughs> shortly. And then after that, we have a special event request that came in and um, uh, uh, somebody else had a question. Uh, in the queue earlier that we will address then as well. Uh, and there was a question in the, uh, about when this takes effect. This will get posted. When this, this will take effect when the um, uh, town staff posts it on the website, which uh, may not be tomorrow. I think we said Thursday was when we projected having that. Yeah, up. Eli, I, I, my guess is that question wants to know when when this takes effect, and it's my understanding that our motion was for Thursday. That's right. All right, now, uh, moving on to agenda item number three, if we could just uh, bear with me and the software package for just a moment. Are we staying in Q&A? Well, uh, yeah, because nobody can speak, even if they are in Q and A, um, unless they ah. recognize them. And them. And I'm there not going to poke any knobs because, well, we I just lose them up in our asshole. Right. Um, uh, yeah. No, Mr. Cleary, can you actually hear us, and can you say anything that we can hear? Good evening. Can you hear me? Oh, thank God. <laughs> All right. Um, so, uh, so this is an opportunity for uh, board members. Uh, there, kind of one or two board members have already met you in the process of the the interview process and the selection process that you went through. Um, so, Jason Cleary is a candidate finalist for uh, fire chief position in town. This is an opportunity for board members to um, who have not met him to. Uh, meet him to ask him any questions and um, and then we'll be uh, discussing a potential gratification of him as the new fire chief. So uh, I think Mr. Clear maybe the, the right thing for you, us to do is just have a little introductory statement from you and uh, then we can uh, go around the board. Sure, well uh, thank you for having me tonight and uh, I appreciate you uh, Allow me to get to this stage in the process. I, I've, I've enjoyed it. It's been uh, seems to move very smoothly, which I appreciate. Uh, it was great meeting all you folks. Some excellent questions. Um, um, I had the opportunity to come to town uh, a week or two ago and meet with the interim fire chief and some of the on-duty shift. Um, also. Uh, sat down with Greg, I uh, went and met with the police chief as well as the harbor master. I uh, was very impressed with everybody I met. Uh, everybody was uh, very courteous and welcoming. I learned a lot about the town and uh, um, 
looking forward for the opportunity to come and, um, I guess, apply my uh, education and training and experience and uh, become uh, part of the firefighting team there in town. Um, I've been involved in public safety for over 35 years now uh, in law enforcement, firefighting, and EMS, and uh, um, really was impressed with a lot of the firefighters I met with some good ideas and just the willingness to communicate and uh, looking forward to getting started. Okay. Uh, well, uh, uh, board members, uh, who who would like to uh, speak first? <laughs> wow. Was it something I said? You're not going to get off this easy in the future. That's, that's, that's okay. Bring it on. We're ready. Uh, this is Jeff Blood, Return of Jason. I was uh, part of the committee, the search committee, and uh, um, I, I, I know that this decision was a, a for the town was a long time coming, um, and we had a tough decision in the in the final analysis to make. And I'm very happy and very pleased to see that uh, that uh, Mr. Feshfield is putting you forth as the candidate. So well, thank you. What we, uh, I will I will welcome you uh, as soon as the officially sanctioned vote <laughs> occurs. But I'm I'm very pleased with this. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Ms. Jakes. Um, I don't really have any um, specific questions. I feel that the people who uh, did the vetting have done what they needed to do, and um, it, it all looks good on paper. So oh, I look sure. forward to meeting you, Jason. Nice meeting you as well. Uh, Mr. Steiner. Okay, thank you. Uh, hey, Jason, this is Arthur Steiner. Um, yeah, I guess three things. Um, I'm, I'm interested in just from your analysis of the town, what, what you see as the, the biggest strength of the department. Um, the biggest strength of the department, um, I was able to gain a, a little bit of knowledge in talking to uh, Chief Beardsley, but uh, in meeting um, some of the enthusiastic firefighters and fire officers, I think, is, is definitely a strength. Uh, they seem uh, very eager to get things going. We talked a lot about uh, radios. We talked about equipment. Um, they, they seem eager to do the job that they're, uh, they're doing. I know for myself as well as for them, firefighting's a passion. I, I definitely see that's a strength. Um, shift staffing at three is a good, is a good place to be. Uh, certainly much better than two. Um, uh, and then uh, there's some new equipment there. And um, so, so I, you know, I'm still learning about the uh, strength of the mutual aid in the area. Um, I was encouraged to hear about um, the interaction with uh, the police department, with the police officers being uh, EMTs as well, and uh, meeting with the chief and knowing how well uh, fire and police need to work hand in hand. We end up at the, the same instances, and uh, so I, I think that's definitely a strength, the, the uh, relationship between the two departments, at least at what I've seen of it so far, and I, I hope to only improve on that. Great. Yeah, uh, that's, that's a great answer. Thank you. What do you, what do you see just uh, objectively coming in as the, the biggest challenge maybe facing the department? Well, I think one of the challenges, and, and it's come up in the meeting as, 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 as well as here, is a just stability of, of getting everything grounded, of uh, evaluating where uh, the different elements are, where the equipment's at, where the staffing is at, where the training is at, where the uh, physical plant of the building is at, and uh, kind of starting a baseline and then, and then seeing, you know, what progress we can make in those various areas. Um, but, um, Great. And, you and know, you, uh, just lastly, do you, do you see any kind of... Um, you know, missed opportunity that you see kind of coming in that you think uh, the town should take advantage of? I'm sorry, I missed the first part of your question. 
Yeah, I was just curious if you saw uh, from your, you know, in a way you have an objectivity coming in new. Uh, do you see any um, kind of missed opportunity that the town could take advantage of um, as it relates to fire? Um, I don't know so much as missed opportunity. I've, I've done a lot of research and just, just trying to get a sense of where you're at, not so much you know, where you could be at or whatever. Um, I'm not sure I totally understand your question. Well, just more just things that you think you could improve upon quickly, uh, if there are one or two things that you saw as, uh, from what you've done in your review process. Are there, are there, are there quick wins or things that you think are, uh, you know, would, would improve things quickly? Well, it's yeah. already a strong department, so I was just curious if there were right, additional right. things that you saw. Um, it, it, it's really hard to say without taking some time to observe um, and, and just see how it, how, it, how it functions. I mean, I know a little bit about the equipment and, and a, a little bit about, um, you know, some of the issues in, in discussing about dispatch and things like that. And I've read some of the studies about um, EMS and how it's run. And, but I, I really would want to get in and see it for myself and, and, and sit down, go through the files, review the budgets, uh, review the training records, and uh, again, try and establish that baseline. Um, there, there are certain things you, you, you certainly could do, um, just as far as uh, teamwork and training that are that, that are no cost, that are team building activities that um, w would really would really benefit the town. And um, you know, I, I think I've seen a lot that um, I don't know if you're already doing, but if you're not, there there, there are some easy fixes. None definitely come to mind right off the bat and maybe just um, finding a way to, to store the gear or looking, you know, what equipment you have and how it's being utilized, um, just things like that. Great. Thank you. It's a great, it's a great department, so um, I, uh, I think the future looks good. Thank you. You're very, thank you. I'm, I'm very much looking forward to it. Muffin. Hey, Jason. It's nice to see you again. You as well. I um, I just want to say it was a pleasure to participate in the interview process with all the candidates. I think we had some we had some great candidates, and I'm pleased that that you rose to the top. Well, thank you. I, I appreciate uh, that. I, I like say I enjoyed the process. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I look forward to stopping in and um, saying hello when you're settled into the our our fire hut on School Street. Well, there you go. Certainly welcome anytime. So, Jason, I had uh, uh, one uh, uh, specific question. Uh, sure. So, so your timeline for you you retired from uh, frontline fire duty a few years ago. Is that correct? And you've been teaching yes. since then. Yeah, I, I did that. I was doing some teaching. Uh, I went back into law enforcement briefly. Uh, doing court security, and then I went into safety at a uh, private uh, boarding high school, doing campus safety. And you maintained your um, paramedic certification yes. throughout that. Yes. Um, uh, how did you do that, out of curiosity? Um, well, I, I can, did my continuing education hours every two years through uh, training at the places I was at. Um, as well as doing online training, uh, some video training, uh, trade journals, and then uh, every two year I attend like a, a four or five day, um, eight hour a day refresher course at the local hospital. It's put on for EMS personnel where we go through a lot of the hands-on skills and uh, then get signed off by the medical director from the hospital and then submit that paperwork to the National Registry. Okay. Is there any uh, like uh, practical uh, uh, well now my words are failing me <laughs> Is, <laughs> coming back in you're, 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 we're proposing and expecting and imagining you to be a, a working chief you're going to be um, uh, uh, performing as a paramedic as well uh, I imagine are you going to uh, need any um, uh, refreshers or practical um, training before you jump back into that? Uh, well, we get that refresher on the practicals every two years as part of the training. And certainly there are some skills that I could, I could brush up on by, by doing ambulance calls and being alongside the other paramedics. 
um, also brushing up on, um, I have copies of and read through, but uh, brushing up on the uh, Massachusetts protocols, which are different than the New Hampshire protocols, which are different than the Maine protocols, and I have licenses in all states, so it's just narrowing down of what you can do where and which state is using which drugs and which configuration. But uh, I, I've been doing EMT and, and first aid work all the way back to high school. So the, the, the basics aren't an issue. Yep. But, it, but it will be good, you know, working alongside the medics that are working within the protocols and have been Massachusetts medics there at the fire department to, to gain that knowledge and, and to pick their brains and learn from their experience as well. So uh, I, I don't know if that answers your question. Yeah, um, it, it does. It does. All right. Um, and I'd, I'd asked uh, pre other questions previously of Greg, so I think I'm uh, uh, all set at this point. Um, so, uh, unless there are any other further questions from the board, uh, what we want tonight is to have a vote to ratify the appointment of Jason Leary as our next fire chief pending a satisfactory pre-employment physical. So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? Roll call vote. Ms. Mrs. Driscoll. Yes. Mr. Steiner. Yes. Ms. Jakes. Yes. Mr. Bob Turner. Yes. Mr. Bowling votes yes. Welcome to town, Mr. Cleary. Um, Thank you very much. Uh, we look forward to having a permanent chief. A pleasure to be here. Looking forward to being that person. Congratulations, Jason. Thank you very much. Again, Thank I appreciate you. all the time you folks have devoted to the process and uh, and uh, just the uh, the welcoming atmosphere I felt from everybody. So we'll see you soon in town, Chief. Yes, you will very soon. And you'll have to try out Singing Beach now that it's oh, open. It's on my list. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right, so um, we have two other uh, small items on the uh, agenda tonight. Um, <clears throat> one is a special event request that came in very late that is time sensitive. We're going to take that up in a minute, but earlier um, there was a question from Lily Coot, and I'm going to unmute you, Lily, and Lily, you can ask your question now. Hi, good evening, everyone. I just wanted to ask a quick question about the statement that was put up today. I'm just going to read it for everyone, um, so in case they haven't heard it yet. So, temporary signs are not allowed within the right of way of town roads, sidewalks, and town property without permission of the town. And I've spoken to a couple different people at the DPW and as well as police officers in town, and I've heard a couple different contradicting statements about what this means. So I'm just wondering if anyone could clarify um, what this statement means and are signs allowed on public property? Well, what, are, what were the sorts of public uh, contradictory statements that you got? I'm curious. So... I put up a sign in Massanoma Park, and I had found it in the recycling bin, and I had talked to an officer, I believe it was on Friday of last week, um, and I would asked him if the signs were allowed on public property, and he said yes, and then today, after the announcement was posted, I talked to someone at the DPW, and they had told me that that announcement could be interpreted as the signs are allowed, but they are not allowed in ways that prohibit people from driving in the roads or walking on the sidewalks, and then I talked to an officer different officer at the police office today and he had told me that this statement means that there are no public there are no signs allowed on public property at all so I'm just wondering if someone could clarify what the announcement means okay <clears throat> so um, the town maintains the right to um, manage what's go what goes on in the in, it, in its right of ways and there is a law which says, there is a bylaw which says that the, you cannot construct signs which um, intrude into the public spaces in the right of ways. And we have also um, uh, traditionally, when people want to 
uh, put posts up or put uh, banners up on fences. We make them go through an approval process uh, to make an application to um, the town, a special application, special event application, and the board approves whether or not signage or a banner can be posted for a particular time. Um, and in general, the um, police uh, also have littering laws that they can use to uh, decide when a particular posting is uh, litter or not. Now, um, obviously, we uh, don't uh, uh, have a zero tolerance policy for with respect to um, postings on utility poles like lost cat or yard sale. We try to use some common sense about um, um, how that bylaw really is intended to be applied. Um, we're particularly sensitive right now to um, people uh, wanting to be able to express their opinion. But mostly what that post was really trying to uh, point out to people is that uh, even if people see something that they think is um, illegal, then it is up to the town's police department and the DPW to manage that process. We, we've had a number of cases of people taking it into their own hands for removing signs. And in some cases, they've taken down signs that were on private property. In some cases, they've taken down signs that were on public property. And what this statement is there to say is to say that the, let the town manage it. And for people who... Um, do want to post signs or or uh, make some expression during this period of time uh, or any period of time, we encourage them to come to the board and we'll work with people to um, give them space that they need to, to um, uh, post things. Um, that's what that um, uh, statement was to uh, meant to convey. Uh, we We wanted to diffuse some of the tension that was building up because there were people taking matters into their own hands and then there were other folks who um, really didn't uh, like that this was happening and were um, uh, talking about uh, making public uh, the people who were doing this and it wasn't a it's not a really good strong community building um, situation and so so we we put out this guidance let the police and the DPW manage whether or not signs are in the right place or not and for the people who are posting the signs work with the town to get your signs posted in a, in a way that's that the town will support and um, uh, meets your your own needs does that answer your question yeah, I just have another clarifying question, if you don't mind. So I did speak to an officer today who said that the police officers, you know, they have, quote, better things to do than, you know, watch the signs all day. And I agree with you on that statement that obviously we need to work with the town and everything. But I hope that you guys can provide some resources of where we can submit the posters. And also, I think it would be a good idea if we had a designated area, for example, Masconomo Park or in front of the elementary school, where it would people were able to post posters specifically to the Black Lives Matter movement that the town approved that that's a place where the, the signs can be posted. So there's the littering, for example, if the signs fall apart, that can be monitored more closely and et cetera, because it's been very difficult to see all the signs being taken down when they have been placed on public property. And I just don't want to do the wrong thing. And I've been told that the, some of the signs were on public property, but I didn't realize that there was a process and we we're posting signs where we'd seen announcements or selectman signs posted. So, okay, um, that, that's very reasonable, um, and I think we can work with that. And uh, do any uh, board members have any comments or, or thoughts on this right now? Um, I would like to know what exactly. Um, who would somebody get in touch with if they did wish to put up a sign? 
Well, typically... For me, I had called today. Oh, I'm sorry to cut you off. I had called today asking the DPW where to put the signs, and they had directed me to this meeting. So I just, I agree. I think there should be a good resource for people to be able to have the signs be put up. Well, then, and, and so um, my question was more for clarification um, for people, which is why I was um, asking so that hopefully we'll all know. Yeah, so ordinarily a request for a special event would uh, either go in through Parks and Rec or directly to the uh, town administrator's office, and then it would land in front of us. But in this case, the notion that we uh, establish, for the, at least for the time being, a place where people uh, could post signs is an interesting one, uh, and I wonder if uh, board members have any thought about, thoughts about that. Is this something that uh, uh, we think we could um, allow the uh, town administrator and, and uh, police chief to establish a reasonable location and um, uh, uh, can communicate to the town on a temporary basis, say two weeks? I think in this particular situation, um, I, I, I would just ask Greg to come up with a, with a plan. Eli, you're going to need to unmute Greg. He got kicked off, and he's uh, phoned back in. Oh, awesome. While I'm doing that, any other board members uh, care to dip their toes in the water here? Well, I, I just believe that whatever the decision is, there needs to be one central location for the request to flow through, and the information that's provided by other departments needs to be accurate. I would agree. I agree with that. Yeah, I think it's tough too because there are a lot of I felt that I well I've seen actually that there are a lot of signs that are still up around town in public places that aren't regarding the Black Lives Matter movement and those haven't been taken down. Meanwhile, all the Black Lives Matter posters that were in town have been removed, um, maybe by uh, the public or even by the DPW, etc. But it's just frustrating because I feel it's a little bit unequal, and it also needs to be consistent. I will say that, to my knowledge, the town has taken down no signs. Okay, I, I'm, I might have been misinformed, but I had been told that some of the signs were being removed. Hmm. All right, well, we'll check. Lily, you were told that some of the signs were being removed by town staff? Uh, no, sir. I mean, they have been being removed by the public, but I'd also, I'd not been informed that they are being removed by town staff. I, just, I, I saw a statement in that announcement that said that if they needed to be relocated, the DPW and the police were going to relocate them, and I've seen a lot of them gone, have disappeared, so I didn't know if they had been relocated by the DPW or by the police officers. I see. Um, I, I'd like to make a comment, um, if it's okay. Yeah, please. Um, I'm very reluctant to have a specific place that these signs go. Um, I think that uh, the thing that we can best do is to communicate to the town that if there's a problem with the placement of a sign, um, that they contact the um, we pick it, the town administrator's office, the uh, the uh, police department or the uh, DPW to have the sign um, removed if it's problematic. Um, I think that if we start to get into having a particular place that signs goes, signs go, we're going to get a lot of uh, competing politics 
happening in a very concentrated place. Um, and and Lily, I, I'm, I understand the conundrum here and that we need to address it. Um, but I think that if we can communicate to the public that the only people who should remove these signs are town staff, and town staff have a clear directive from Greg as to what's what's okay and what's not okay. I would agree with Jeff. I, I, I think that you know nobody should touch something someone else has put up unless they are directed by the town to do so. I just want to clarify quickly, Jeff. The town had released a statement that said that the signs weren't allowed to be on public property, and now you're saying that signs are allowed to be on public property, but if people have an issue, they need to contact the DPW? It's, or like, the, that's, I'm just that's, confused. Thank you, Lily. That's what I'm proposing. Um, what I understand is that that statement was, was put out um, to uh, clarify what the, uh, what the town ordinance says. Um, but if we're going to allow signs, I think that the only people who should be removing them are town personnel. I 100% agree with you. I just want to make sure that everyone is notified that the statement has been taken back. Uh, well, I know so it's been. It, so thank you for I'm only, that. I really appreciate just, it. Lily, this is a discussion, and I'm only making a proposal. It hasn't been uh, put into uh, a policy of of sorts. There is a town bylaw, and that's more than a policy. That's voted on by the town meeting. So, yeah. so if I can jump in, this is Greg. Can you hear me? Yeah, please do. Yep, we can hear you. Welcome yeah, back. So, <laughs> thank you. Sorry about dropping off on the computer. Um, at least I was able to hear everything before. Uh, so, yes, we, we put up the statement Sunday that made it very clear that we have a town bylaw that says that signs in the right of way or on sidewalks are not allowed. So that's a general bylaw adopted by the voters. If signs are on public land, like Masco, like Reed, um, then normally permission is required beforehand to put those signs up. So the message that was sent out on Sunday night was aimed to a, clarify that, and B, ask anyone not to remove signs, that it'll only be DPW or police that, that should be doing that. We have not done that. No, no town staff have removed signs at this point. Um, and going forward, if there's a request, if there's a request to put Sorry. a sign up on public land, then yes, I think that request should come through um, my office, and I can convey where permission is granted to DPW and the police. So who should be the to... DPW is who we should contact? No. no. For the no, sign approval. The town, administ town administrator's office is the office that I would recommend that we channel this all through. Okay. I just want to make sure that I'm just crystal clear on this. So the town administrator's office. And you can easily contact me by sending an email. Request is fine. My last name is Federsteel, and then G is the first initial. And then it's at manchester.ma.us. Okay. Thank you so much. I really appreciate having this conversation. And thank you guys for listening to me. Thank you for coming on, Lily. Okay. Uh, now, uh, we got a, a special event request from Bella Wright. Um, actually, Bella. E Eli, may I interrupt you a minute? There was yeah. actually, there was one that um, sort of a notice that came in earlier today. And I know the person who sent that notice is in is actually online and has been on um, waiting to speak if need be. So we actually have two different gatherings. One is um, much less form, much less formal. 
So I don't know if that needs to be. A, did you get that notice today? I didn't get the only notice, the actual notice that I got today was a special events permit application, which I sent around to the board. Yeah. Uh, we came in quite uh, fairly late from, from Bella Wright uh, for an event at uh, Masconoma. Right. And I remember that there was an email um, uh, related to something very informal, but no event request. Right. Um, and uh, so what I was going to take up tonight was this uh, official um, uh, special permit application for an event in Okay. So we have, I just wanted to make sure, because I did know that Chloe Schwartz is online in case anybody had any questions regarding the informal gathering. And she did. She submitted hers this morning at 8.40. So, just uh, just now, going, Sonia. Okay, uh, that one hasn't uh, gotten through to us yet. Okay. Uh, so when it, and it, when that one comes to me, I'll, I'll address it. Um, all right. So the one that we have is from Bella Wright. This is for. Um, uh, an event at Masconomo on Friday, June 12th. Um, uh, estimated attendance is currently between one and 200 people. And there will be some amplified sound at the beginning. Uh, Chief Fitzgerald has already talked to uh, Bella, I believe, and uh, has worked out um, how this would be managed from a public safety standpoint. Um, uh, any questions from the boards? Where are they going to be doing? They, the, it said that they're um, going to have um, a speaker system. Are they setting that? speaker system up at um in Masconomo? Uh, right, if I could jump in, I believe that's the case. That so that they would gather they would start the gathering at, at Masco. That's where a, a couple of speeches would be held with the speaker uh, amplifier. Um, and then they would then have a, a walk up to uh, to town hall and conclude. So uh, my only comment from my side on this, I'm all for it. Um, and I'm all for uh, peaceful protest. I think uh, it's a hallmark of our um, democracy. In our, mm -hmm. um, I would say that the one thing that's important to me is that uh, the group respect the social distancing requirements. Um, that's really important because we worked very hard to um, right. keep this town um, uh, as healthy and ready to uh, reopen cleanly as as we could, and uh, there have been other uh, um, gatherings I know where people have respected this. There's a fair number of people, um, so I would, uh, if I were approving this, I would approve it with the caveat that the organizers stress this um, to the, uh, uh, the people who attend the, the event. If they're making opening comments uh, via amplified sound, I, I think it would, uh, it would be appropriate for them to um, tell people or, or encourage people that they really need to respect their social distancing requirements. Eli, may I make a um, couple more comments? Yeah, go ahead. Um, in addition, I think in you know encouraging people to have masks on where you're talking about one hundred to two hundred people, and if they are then walking from Masconoma Park to town hall um, that's a lot of foot traffic and um is will there be a police detail to make sure people are safely on the sidewalks and not moving out into the road? 
I think Todd did so, say that he would. Yes, go ahead, Greg. Right. So yes, there. Um, Todd is arranging to have um, um, police escort, uh, depending on how what size of crowd is, um, whether or not it can be um, contained to the sidewalks, or if indeed there'd be a temporary short um, shutdown of, of a short stretch of road. Thank you. Any other uh, members of the board have any questions? I think this is really uh, exciting that this is uh, being done. It's being done with forethought, um, bringing the request to the board and to the attention of town officials. I know that the vigil that occurred uh, last week um, uh, was done more spontaneously and uh, that the police weren't even aware that it was happening until it was almost over. Um, so I think, I think that, that the, the working partnership between the people who are, the, the young people who are trying to organize this and uh, the police department is what we hope for um, right down the line in terms of our relationship between our community and our police. And I know that in my conversations with Todd that that's what he supports as well. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, any other comments from the board? All right. So can I get a motion to approve the uh, special event uh, application for a peaceful protest and vigil on Friday, June 12th? So moved. Got a second? Second. Any discussion? Roll call vote. Mr. Steiner. Yes. Mr. Bob Turner. Yes. Ms. Driscoll. Yes. Uh, Ms. Jakes. Yes. And uh, I vote yes as well. So, uh, Bella, thank you for your time and your effort here, and uh, we hope to see you on Friday. Thank you so much. You're welcome. All right. Uh, that so, includes, so, Eli? Yeah, go ahead, Greg. Yeah. So, so the other request um, we felt didn't rise to the level of a of a formal event request, um, and yet we still feel that it was fine for it to proceed as more of an informal gathering. And that was scheduled for Sunday at noon. So perhaps I didn't communicate that as clearly as I should have in my email earlier this morning. Okay, so that's that's just notifying uh, uh, people of the event and uh, so we can... So it really is on the par of what um, happened last week for some of the um, some of the gatherings? Yeah. Um, and we thought that this, this was more in, in line with that and didn't require a formal event application. Right. Okay, so uh, ha actually, how will that uh, that that event is purely informally going to be communicated to people? Correct. That's my understanding. Yeah. Okay. Any other comments or questions from the board? Eli, this is Todd. Can you hear me? Yeah, Todd. Yeah, uh, just I have a meeting with the uh, uh, Chloe Schwartz on uh, or a phone call uh, scheduled uh, on Wednesday to discuss uh, her her event. But by all accounts, it's it, like Greg said, it's going to be very informal. Okay. All right. Um, well, uh, that brings us to the end of agenda items um, for the meeting tonight. Um, a lot of uh, very good progress in a short period of time. I'd like to thank everybody for the effort they put in on this. This is some uh, a lot of work put in in a short period of time to, um, I, I think, make some really productive changes for us. So with that, uh, unless there are any other comments, I'd take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Yeah, I think we had enough in there to call it a second, too. <laughs>
<laughs> Any discussion? All in favor, Ms. Driscoll? Yes. Mr. Steiner? Yes. Ms. Jakes? Yes, please. Mr. Bodmer Turner? Yes. Mr. Bowling votes yes as well. Good night, everybody. Thank you for attending. Uh, and thanks for your attention to uh, the business of the town. We'll see you soon. Good night, Eli. Thank you. Yep. Good night, everybody. <laughs>